So that takes us to the science that we've done about PAHs, the environment, and coal tar-based parking lot sealants. Um, after discussions with the city of Austin, they asked us to design a study for them to see whether coal tar-based sealants might be contributing to contamination in urban water bodies. So we already know from analyses that these products contain very high concentrations of PAHs. That's a no-brainer. We have those numbers. But if they just stick to the parking lot and they don't go anywhere, then maybe they're not a problem and we don't really need to worry about them. So we designed a study to see whether these particles coming off the parking lots were mobile. Um, we chose 13 parking lots in use around the city of Austin. Some of them had coal tar based parking lot seal coat. Some of them had an alternative product that's an asphalt based parking lot seal coat. By the way, the difference between these two is that the asphalt based has about 50 milligrams per kilogram of PAHs in the product compared to 50 to 100,000. So it's a factor of about 1,000 difference. Um, some of the parking lots had asphalt that didn't have any seal coat at all, and some of them were concrete. So we had a range of surfaces. What they all were is parking lots, and what they all were was in use. So all of them were subject to all of those other urban sources of PAHs. So we, in fact, did take into consideration all of the other sources of PAHs, tire particles, leaking motor oil, car exhaust, just as a, as a, as a group. The only thing differentiating the parking lot stand in terms of their PAH concentrations would be the presence or absence of the coal tar based seal coat. And we, we bermed off areas of the parking lot and we used the equivalent of about one tenth of an inch rain um, through a, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, nothing, there's no rocket science here, it's a pretty straightforward experiment. And we pumped up the particles and we filtered them and we analyzed them for PAHs. So here's the results. Um, down there on the horizontal axis, we have our three parking lot types, the unsealed, the asphalt sealed, and the coal tar sealed. And then the fourth are scrapings, where we actually uh, got down and took a, put, took a paint scraper and scraped up the little bits of dried seal coat um, to distinguish those from the mobile dust, which is also being diluted by things like um, leaves and sticks and, and dust and particles coming from other things. Um, on the vertical axis there, we have total pH concentration, again, in milligrams per kilogram. This is a logarithmic scale. We have a very wide range of concentrations to show, so I put it on a log scale, which means every time we go up a line, it's getting higher by a factor of 10. So um, the unsealed parking lot, the runoff, the particles in the runoff, yes, they're contaminated. They exceed the PEC uh, by more than two times. Well, nobody ever expected that parking lot runoff was going to be clean. None of us want to run out and drink parking lot runoff, right? So that 54 number is good representation of all those other sources. That's what you would expect to see on a parking lot that has tire particles, uh, used motor oil, um, a, automobile exhaust, and atmospheric deposition, but doesn't have coal tar based seal coat. The particles coming off that with the asphalt-based seal coat were about 10 times higher, and those coming off the, the uh, parking lots with the coal tar-based seal coat were 65 times higher. Now, since then, we have learned that the asphalt-based seal coat only contains 50 milligrams per kilogram. So why were these concentrations so high? Well, in retrospect, we found out that this was asphalt seal coat that had been applied over old coal tar-based seal coat. So what we have here is a cross-contamination problem. In subsequent studies, and you'll have an opportunity to see the data, we have found that the dust that comes off the parking lots with the asphalt-based seal coat is no different than the dust concentrations coming off the unsealed parking lots. Now, to compare this to some concentrations, um, most of the Superfund sites in the U.S. that have been listed for PAHs have concentrations that are on the same scale as the particles being washed off parking lots with coal tar-based seal coat. And to compare those to some of our urban sources, none of them can come close to explaining concentrations that are in the thousands. However, the coal tar based scrapings are higher than that, so clearly as they erode, they could explain these high concentrations. So this was published in 2005 in Environmental Science and Technology, and I think you've probably heard this publication referred to a number of times. So from then on. Um, we were intrigued by this, this little story lit that we'd uncovered in Austin. And we started to wonder whether maybe 
this previously unrecognized source of urban PAHs could be contributing to these upward trends we were seeing in various places around the country. So from then on, starting in about 2003, um, every time we went to, to um, a city to collect a lake core, we also went around to different places in the watershed and we swept parking lots and we collected parking lot dust and we had that parking lot dust analyzed. Um, we had two goals. One was to extend our results from a very local level to a national level. The second was to characterize the PAH, what PAHs are characteristic of parking lot dust. Now the reason that this is important is because we would like to quantify, okay, you collect a sample, it's got PAHs in it, where did they come from? This is the $64,000 question and I know it's the one you're interested in as well. In order to do that, we need to be able to characterize what we call the PAH signature or profile of different sources. So all sources are not created equal. They not only have different concentrations, but they have different PAH signatures. And when I say that, I mean PAH signature is the proportion of the different PAHs that are characteristic to a source. So let's use a, a cooking analogy. Um, you may, um, you may eat some shortcake and it's got sugar and flour and butter in it. And then you may go off and have a sugar cookie. And it's also got sugar and flour and butter in it, but in different proportions, right? They're not the same thing. They each have a characteristic sugar, flour, butter signature. PAH sources are the same way. So in the literature, there's published PAH profiles for most of the known urban sources. But there wasn't one for coal-tar-based seal coat because nobody really hadn't been on the radar before our study. So we wanted to collect enough samples so that we could really characterize the signature of coal tar seal coat, the dust, the mobile dust that we think is possibly washing off and getting in urban water, water bodies. So here's the results of the nine city dust study. And in each of these cities, we went to several parking lots in each watershed, and then we combined the dust into one sample and had it analyzed. Um, a kind of interesting phenomenon is that um, from websites, industry websites, talking to people in the industry, um, informal surveys of what's whole, sold at home improvement stores, it appears that west of the Continental Divide, what is predominantly used is the asphalt-based product. And east of the Continental Divide, it's the coal tar-based product that's the most popular. So one of the things we were curious about, curious about is, were we going to really see this anecdotal evidence? Were we going to see this translated into parking lot dust concentrations? So here's some of the numbers that we found in the nine cities from east to west. So what we found was that the dust from the seal-coated parking lots in the east was very consistent with what we had seen in the first study, Austin, with that 3,500 number. It's also about 1,000 times higher than what we saw in the west. So it looks very well like this. Remember, the difference in the concentrations in the products themselves is about a factor of 1,000 different. This is what we saw from unsealed parking lots in the same watersheds. So now we're seeing from the unsealed parking lots in the same watersheds as the sealed parking lots, much lower concentrations. So it can't be something like atmospheric deposition because atmospheric deposition isn't going to discriminate between one parking lot and the other. The ones with the seal coat, the only difference between them, again, they all have tire particles. They all have leaking motor oil. We are taking into account all their sources. The only difference is the seal coat. But another interesting thing is that in the east, we're seeing slightly high, higher concentrations, even off unsealed parking lots than the west. What we think this is is off-site transport. When the wind blows or when you drive your car across a parking lot with coal tar-based seal coat and you drive onto another parking lot, you're bringing some of that with you. And in fact, this has been corroborated by a different um, study that was published this year by Yanning and Yang out of the University of Illinois using an entirely different approach. She's using a microscopic approach to identify particles. And what she found was that when she looked at soils in commercial areas and when she looked at particles coming off unsealed parking lots, she saw bits of coal tar seal coat in in, in that what you would think should be uncontaminated soils and par parking lot dust. So it clearly is making it way, its way off the sites. So we published this in 2009 in Environmental Science and Technology. 